Hello and welcome to this session on building intelligent apps using Azure OpenAI. In Adobe Photoshop you can take any image file, select an area of the image and specify in text what you want to generate an image of. Within seconds Adobe Photoshop generates three variations of the description you typed. You can view the generated variations by clicking the next button. You are able to hear about OpenAI everywhere these days. There are a lot of terms that accompany the term OpenAI. Let's understand why OpenAI is needed. If you look at a typical web application front end that is accessed by a user, it uses a back end that comprises data and logic, specifically databases, business logic, and even some API services. Looking at APIs, OpenAI is one API, and Microsoft's version in Azure is called Azure OpenAI, just like Azure Cognitive Services. Microsoft invested $10 billion in the OpenAI organization to use their technology. My intention with these sessions is to show the use of Azure OpenAI to go beyond chatbots to build an intelligent application. You might have come across the term large language model on the internet. In reality, a large language model is just a concept like object-oriented programming. It's not related to any specific vendor or platform. An LLM or large language model is just a machine learning model which has been trained like any machine learning model should be. It is called large because it's been trained on a very large corpus, a very large body of text. The term foundational model is also used for an LLM. Just like any machine learning model, an LLM has one or more parameters. Some examples of large language models are GPT 3.5 by Microsoft, Dolly by Databricks, and Bard by Google. I have also included a link that has a list of large language models by different vendors. Again, keep in mind that a large language model is just a machine learning model and nothing more. What I intend from this presentation is to acclimate you with OpenAI concepts, to teach you how to develop using Azure OpenAI, and briefly how you can differentiate between Langchain and Semantic Kernel. Before large language models or GPT was released at the beginning of this year, which I would call the old times, this is what a typical neural network looked like. It consisted of an input layer comprising some inputs, an output layer with some outputs, and one or more hidden layers. The three common examples of neural networks are convolutional neural networks or CNN, recurrent neural networks or RNN, and generative adversarial networks or GAN. Convolutional neural networks are mainly used to process images to allow a computer to determine what is included in an image file. Recurrent neural networks are used to process text. Lastly, generative adversarial networks are used to generate content. In this new era, you no longer have to create neural networks manually. You get a pre-developed machine learning model that you can provide some input data and get results as output. In case of OpenAI, the input is in the form of text and the result is also a text string. Remember the result is called a response. To expand further the input is known as a prompt. The resulting value can either be text or an image file or even some programming code. With Azure OpenAI the large language model exists in Azure and is surfaced or exposed as an API service. Behind the scenes each of the outputs are created using machine learning models. The text output is generated using GPT models. The image output is generated using DAL-E and the programming code is generated using codex models. In summary, with Azure OpenAI, once the input is provided, the outputs can either be classified as a completion, a chat completion, or an embedding. A completion is just an answer to a question, whereas a chat completion is a reply to an ongoing conversation. We will discuss embedding a little later. When you use the Azure Open API model, you specify two parameters, temperature and top P. Each of these parameter values determine how closely related the generated output relates to the text provided as input. The higher the value of the parameters, the less the output is related to the input. You will have to tweak the values of these two parameters to strike a balance that is appropriate for your use case. Anytime text is processed by a computer, it is known as Natural Language Processing or NLP. This list pertains to the tasks that are associated with NLP. Let's look at our first demo in this session, which is internal only to Microsoft employees. Open the website foundry toolkit.azurewebsites.net slash playground v2 in your web browser. Type your question in the search box. When you click the button, this website calls the Azure Open AI API service to return a response back to you. That generated response text is displayed on your screen as shown. When you use Azure Open AI, you need to understand these three concepts. 
tokens, vectors, and embeddings. Let's look at tokens first. If you have a piece of text like Microsoft welcomes Activision to the Xbox family, the Azure Open AI API divides the text into separate segments. In this scenario, the example sentence comprises of 15 or so tokens. Tokens offer a way for a sentence to be measured to calculate costs. Vectors are just a numeric representation of the input text. The process of converting text into vectors is known as embedding. You don't have to do anything to achieve this because it happens automatically behind the scenes. Let's look at an example of why vectors are used. For instance, you have a piece of text America, which can be related to the words China and England, but not pizza. In the second example, the word pizza can be related to words burger or macaroni, but not the word Arabic. The way that the computer calculates these is using vectors. So why are vectors used? The answer is to this question is to calculate similarity. Again, the numeric value and how close it is to another vector or numeric value determines if two pieces of text are related. Let's look at a publicly available demo for vector search. Go to aka.ms slash vector search demo. Any term that you search for, the website determines related terms using vectors and displays the results in your web browser. You can also search for images related to a term like this. You have seen this diagram before. With Azure Open AI API, you use an application code to call the API, and the resulting outputs are also consumed by the application. Let me demonstrate this with the T-Prompt chatbot. Again, this demo is accessible only to Microsoft employees. If you go to the T-Prompt chatbot in your web browser at aka.ms slash T-Prompt, you can select a model that this chatbot has been trained on. When you enter something in the text, the response from the Azure Open AI API service is displayed on the page. Of course, you have to write code to call the Azure Open AI API service. The code that you write involves three steps. Number one, you have to provision the Azure Open API service using the Azure portal. Second, you have to deploy a model. And lastly, number three, you have to write the code to call the API. Let's look at the demo of this. Log into the Azure portal and create an instance of the Azure Open AI API service. To play with the Azure Open AI API service endpoint you created, click this button and go to the Azure Open AI Studio. You can create a model on the deployment screen and then chat with your API endpoint. When you are writing the code to call the API, you can either use Langchain or Semantic Kernel. Both of these are libraries that you can use. Langchain is open source and can be used in code written in Python, JavaScript, or TypeScript. You can get more examples on langchain.com. On the other hand, Semantic Kernel is owned and maintained by Microsoft and can be used to write code in Python, C Sharp, or Java. You can learn more about this at aka.ms slash Semantic Kernel. I wrote a post a few months ago on Semantic Kernel in English and Urdu at this URL. You can find some code samples for Semantic Kernel at this GitHub repository. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.